Okay, sup everyone, it's your boy, Dark Raku here, with What If Issei was a reincarnation of Satoru Gojo and Kakashi Hatake. Now, before I continue on, I know, I know, I know, I know, I'm basically doing this, like, What If as a series, straight, like, straight series, instead of, like, going on with another What If, and then another What If, and then, then come back to this What If, and, yeah, I don't know why, pretty much... Uh, I kind of like this. I kind of like how I'm doing this story, but yeah, not the point. I have another, uh, well, not another idea. Well, I have another idea, but what if it's called Pirate Legacy? Yes, um, it's basically uh, DXD and uh, One Piece kind of merged together or oh, crossover, kind of. I don't know. I was going to name it What If Issei kind of had a well, well, had a Pirate Legacy, not the point. Uh, or was from a pirate legacy, uh, or made a pirate a pirate legacy? Not the point. Okay, uh, not the fucking point. I pretty much am rambling on, but if you people would like to see that kind of series, maybe I'll do it. Uh, I might put it also on a community tab. Maybe not really. Hmm. I already thought of the devil fruit. It's an OC devil fruit that's pretty much my favorite fucking devil fruit in One Piece. That I made into an OC and much more powerful. Yeah, and much more broken than I actually thought. I kind of... Yeah, I only explain it to one person. And that's mostly a good friend of mine. Uh, mostly a brother. <laughs> brother from another mother. No, I'm just kidding. But, for, um, but yeah, not the point. Let me um, only explain to him. And it was kind of overpowered. He thought about it. But not the point. Uh, let me go into this what if. And yeah. I know I'm rambling on. So, let me begin. So, we go into Mosi, well, Murahama getting towards his house. After getting out of the way from the two exorcists, he's just got to his house. That's where he started designing on some, well, new machinery. New stuff, or maybe go on to some other plans, or mostly other machines that he hasn't finished. But he might want to start on some new ones. But yeah, he's pretty undecisive most of the time. He is smart as hell, but he's somewhat indecisive. But of course, we go into, well, Issei and, well, Matsui kind of getting the text. Now, of course, this is where, well, Issei kind of says, two exorcists. Interesting. Why would there be two exorcists? I know I heard of those things about exorcists going after demons or whatever. Are they here for just demons? Hmm. I'll talk to Motohama later. This is where, well... Issei then goes back to sleep. Well, he was trying to, but literally, well, Rainer is like right next to him laying on his bed. So, of course, he couldn't like go to sleep fully unless he wanted just to tease her a lot. She tried to lit literally just tease him with just having like, well, what's it called? Doing some like plus 18 stuff. And of course, mostly just teasing him with that. But of course, Issei then just kind of goes to her right in front of her and says, I wouldn't mind. He said it very well, gently, but also very kind of smirking and grinning a little bit. This is where, well, Rainer was blushing. This is where, well, Rainer can barely even try to tease Ise because Ise would literally just tease her instead. And this is where, well, you basically do a Uno reverse card, but yeah. This is where, well, almost here, yeah, a reverse card. Uh, not the point. Let me go back into it. What if? Of course, this is where, well, we go into Matsui. Matsui says, Exorcist? Hmm, I wonder if they're strong. He, he thinks in his head. This is where right now he's right now training with swords and right now cutting a dummy's head off right now because he's just training with swords and other things because he wants to get stronger. Now, of course, it's been like, was it called two days? Well, mostly two days passing after the whole kind of event of him going against, was it called, well, his kind of, well, mostly leader, uh, Issei Gojo Hate. But yeah, of course, this is where, well, he's right now having his hair a little bit kind of grown, but yeah. But this is where, well, he says, damn, my hair might take a while. Maybe I can ask Issei to add some chakra. Hmm, that'd be really nice. This is where, well, he right now is right now training. And of course, this is where, well, he hears to the car, well, his parents, well, mostly his mother, Having a drunker stupor, screaming, and yeah. That's where he says, oh my gosh, shut the hell up. 
This is where he almost gets hit by an alcohol beer until he caught that shit and literally starts drinking it. Then he just tosses the beer away. But yeah, mostly it was his next door neighbor because his next door neighbor was right now drunken off his fucking like boots. And of course, he decided to throw the beer over what's it called? Well, over the fence. He tried to hit anyone because he's just drunken. He's basically a 20 year old kind of male. And of course, we were Matsu, we say he drank that shit like it was nothing. Then tosses that shit away into like the trash can. Like he makes it land in the trash can. Or before it kind of landing in the trash can, he throws it up and swings his sword about one time. But this is where the beer bottle gets cut about four times. This is where they all land on the ground. And of course, they're not even, it's not shattered. It's literally a clean cut. This is where, well, I'm going to see size and say, seriously, every fucking person that I live next to seriously can't even drink one beer bottle. Yeah, yeah that beer bottle didn't even taste good. It's nothing, it's not that bad. Well, it's not that bad. It's terrible. I'd rather be drinking sick, vodka, or something else. <sighs> so annoying. I can't believe they buy some cheap ass bullshit. Whatever. This is where, well, Matsui kind of goes inside, literally goes, gets a bottle, like this brownish bottle that says seek on it. And this is where he goes outside and starts kind of putting like candles up, kind of lighting it up. This is where he gets one of those little bottles and pours it in and starts drinking it. He's like, ah, the flavor tastes much better like this. This is where, well, he's looking up into the night sky, but yeah. This is where, well, he's grinning, saying, ha, ah, well. Whoever these exorcists are, I'm going to have fun with them. They might be strong or might be weak. Who cares? This is where he starts drinking, but yeah. But we go into, well, kind of the, well, next day. This is where, well, the exorcists are right now talking towards, well, mostly Rhea's uh, grammary and her group, but yeah. This is where, well, the exorcists are basically just telling her not to get in their way. And literally just telling them to fuck off. This is where, well, uh, Rhea said, okay, I understand, fine. We will not get in your way. This is where the door is knocked at. And this is where Rhea said, we having a meeting. We, uh, I cannot allow you to come in unless it's Kiva. Are you, wait. She says, Kiva, is that you? This is where the person in the other side says, no, mail delivery. This is where, well, Rhea says, I didn't order anything. She looks at a Akano, well, mostly Akano, and then basically a Kuniko, and then just says, did you order anything? They just shake their head, no. Until the door opens, it's basically just Matsui bringing in, was it called, a knocked out, well, uh, Kiva. And this is where, well, what we say it's pretty much this is the milk delivery. This dude almost got killed during a battle last night, but whatever. This is where, well, he drops what's it called Kiba down to the ground. This is where Rias gets up and rushes towards Kiba's side. And this is where she said, Kiba! This is where, well, she then looks up to see Matsui. And Matsui isn't someone to literally attack Kiba. Well, he kind of was a sadistic, uh, well, not sadistic murderer, but mostly a sadistic, not sadistic, mostly, mostly a crazy battle maniac, but still he wouldn't dare to attack Kiba. If Kiba, well, if he wanted to kind of go after Kiba and kill him, he would have done it. But she kind of knows that he's not like that. Kind of. She doesn't really understand Matsui that much, but yeah. Matsui says, well, other than that, I should probably be going. This is where Rhea says, wait, how did it? This is where, well, Masui says, oh, you're wondering how he got like that. Well, he kind of fought against a priest. This is where, well, we go into a flashback. He's mostly telling kind of a story. What happened into mostly Kiba was mostly Kiba kind of went, well, mostly started getting angry because he saw a picture of an Excalibur, mostly at an abandoned place. And of course, this is where he was angry. And of course, left kind of just... Uh, mostly steam off, but yeah. He then got attacked by, well, Freed. And Freed wasn't killed during the whole battle between when Is Issei got there. Issei literally just blasts him straight to the fucking, well, multiple trees. Because literally he thought uh, Freed was just human. And thought he could easily be dead with one red shot. But yeah. But of course, Freed was alive. And Freed was kicking and trying to kill Kiba. This is where he 
Yeah, we're going to free. Free says, come here, pretty boy. I'm about to stab you and make that pretty face ugly as fuck. This is where, well, Freed has an Excalibur. And this is where, well, Kiva was angry with the holy magic and angry with Freed. This is where, well, Kiva was about to get stabbed until a sword blocked it and another blonde haired boy appeared. This is where this blonde haired boy had glasses. And of course, this is where, well, this is where, well, he had longish kind of black, well, not black, but mostly blonde hair. And of course, it was similar gold towards what was called Kiva's kind of color. But of course, he had blue eyes. And of course, he was wearing a black suit. This is where Free said, Another Bray Boy? What the fuck am I? Hell no. Hell no. I am not gay. This is where he's saying out loud the thing. I do not swing that way. I go after, uh, what's it called? Bray Women. And then I'll make them blah, blah, blah. And that's where he's going rambling on. This is where the person says, You disgusting person. It seems that like you have an X caliber. I don't know how you got that. But I will need it back. This is where Kiba tries to get up and say, damn it. This is where Freeze says, huh? Well, I should kill you both. You two annoy me. Two scum like like you should just die. This is where, well, he rushes at, well, mostly this other person. This is where the person is right now blocking with another sword. And of course, the sword kind of has, what's it called, some holy energy, but yeah. And this is where, well, Kiba is trying to get up saying, damn it. I'm not giving up. This is where, well... Free then shot him with the light bullet because Kiba was on the ground. That's where Kiba screams down pain. But this is where it will. Free then kind of tries to kick at the other guy. The other guy managed to dodge. But this is where it will. He had to dodge another light swing. This is where it will. His arm was a little bit cut to his face. Damn. Crazy bastard like you. Still pretty good in fighting. And the referee says, why, thank you. I am pretty good at fighting. <laughs> this is where he's right now sticking his tongue and laughing until he gets his face punched in by, well, by, well, what's it called? A person with black, well, mostly black hair that's kind of growing. But of course, where, well, his eyes are black. And of course, he's wearing a black kind of, well, it's not really, well, it is a kind of black tank top, but it's mostly a very tight, uh, long sleeve shirt. And of course, it's where, well, not long sleeve shirt, mostly what's it called, kind of a, sh a court, uh, mostly cut shirt, but yeah, just a normal black shirt, that's what I'm trying to say, but it's tight, and of course, showing his muscles, this is where, well, this is where, well, this person does have a cut on his, like, lip a little bit, but yeah, this is where, well, mostly like a scar there, but yeah, mm -hmm. This is where he's wearing baggy white pants and black kind of like shoes, like the slip on. But yeah, this is where the person is grinning because he has, uh, well, some kind of creature around his kind of body. And of course, this is where the person says, interesting. I can't believe I find a blonde boy over there kind of almost getting killed. And then I'll find another one. Damn, did they fucking immigrate or whatever the fuck happened? This is where, well, freeze it. Ah, oh, you motherfucker. Who the hell are you? You're not pretty, but you look scary. What the fuck are you? Some kind of gorilla? This is where, well, Free was just angry. And this is where he says, no, I'm guessing they do. This is where, well, Free then looks at what's it called, Kiva and the other dude. Mostly not the one that kind of punched him in the face. Mostly the other blonde hair. And this is where he says, I think they did kind of, kind of, what is that name? Uh, split and then made to two people, clone. This is where, well, the person said, this is where Free says, I think so. Ah, uh, but not the point. You punch me like a, mm, shit, that punch hurt like a motherfucker. This is where, well, the person says, oh, you notice my strength. Huh, I can't wait to really kill you. This is where, well, Free says, huh, that's where you're going to be in bad luck. Because I'm leaving. This is where before he gets at the moment he tries to get away, he gets his light shot out. He's like, oh, you mother. This is where, well. He then looks at the person, and literally this person literally has a gun. This is where the person pulls it out from the creature. Well, mostly pull it, um, well, mostly pull it from his, like, pockets. And this is where, well, the gun is none other than a well, desert eagle that's all black. And this is where, well, the person grins and says, I don't think I like you leaving anytime soon. So, I suggest you stay here with me. This is where, well, freeze it. <laughs> wow, you're a psycho, son of a bitch. Say it's the one who literally... Looks like a fucking psycho, creepy, old ass looking motherfucker. This will work well for you, Zayt. This will work well. This will work well. Uh, Freeze says, 
Screw you, brat. That's it. Smoke bomb. He decides to leave, but of course shot another light bullet, but straight through the smoke and decided to disappear after a while. And this is where it hit the car. Well, the person. The person gets hit in the head and this is where, well, it kind of just bounces off the light bullet. This is where he's like, ow, my fucking head. You motherfucker, get your ass back. This is where, well, the person is gone. It seems the light bullet didn't even hurt him at all. Mostly piss him the fuck off. This is where he says, why you little, mm -hmm. I want to fucking murder that son of a bitch. This is where, well, the other blonde hair man looks at what the car, this person would, Apparently his hair growing, but of course, this is where, well, the man says, I guess I can thank you a little bit. This is where he said, kind of, uh, gentleman-like. This is where, well, the person says, yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel like you're another clone of Kiba here. Kiba, you okay? Kiba's like, ugh, doesn't want to wake up because light is hurting him. The person says, a light bullet did hit him in the leg, so it's pretty much kind of killing him slowly. This is where, well, the person, mostly... Who is named Mat uh well yeah Matsui kinda of says I see. Uh god damn it. So I might have to perform surgery or something. Does it work well? The person who kinda of says yeah, or I can take out the holy bully. If you can take it out. The person to decide to take out uh take it out with some um, what's it called? Mostly managing to take out the bullet, but yeah. Does it work well? Kiba then shut up after a while, but he's still very hurt, but yeah. Since light fragments, but yeah. It is wet, well. Uh, the other person decides to heal him. Well, has, well, not healing magic, but mostly kind of, well, says that's basically the best I can do. I don't really have any healing magic. This is where, well, Masui says, well, you're basically in the same luck as me. I have zero magic. This is where a person winds his eyes, but he's confused. How did he survive the bullet, Masui? This is where Masui says, huh. I don't know, but I don't care. This is where, well, also he says, but I'm just going to grab Kiba and literally take him towards the devils that are supposed to be. And I guess I'm going to have to dress up like a mailman, deliver, deliver this dumbass, and yeah. Whatever. He decides to pick up what's it called Kiba and then, like, walk off, but yeah. But this is where, well, the other blonde person decides to disappear. And basically a slash, he slashes the air with a sword. And this is where, well, he says Excalibur, uh, what's it called? I think, yeah, Excalibur ruler or something like that. And this is where, well, he just cuts it and this is where he decides to disappear. Of course, this is where Masui didn't disappear fully. He saw this and says, interesting. I guess he's an Excalibur user. Hmm. I heard about this a little bit. I don't read the Bible, but this shit's stupid. Uh, I wonder, I'm gonna ask Issei. I feel like he'd be the type of person to be reading that shit. This is where, well, we go into, mostly back into, mostly what happened. Mostly, uh, mostly we did kind of leave out the part of those Excalibur things, and yeah. <clears throat> this is where, well, both the exorcists get up and says, So you're saying that an ex-priest decided to use an Excalibur on this devil? This is where, well... What's we say? No shit. What do you think I said? This is where, well, uh, what's it called? This is where the blue hair with the green tint of highlight decides to get angry and says, What? This is where Matsui says, What? You, are you so slow that you're stupid also? Matsui said with this cocky kind of grin. And this is where, well, uh, Zenobia gets angry. This is where, well, she says, What? Do you want to fight, human? Or she says devil. This is where, well, she pulls out her sword. And this is where Matsui sees it. And literally just grabs it and says, Oh, if I'm a devil, then this shit should be hurting me, right? This is where Zonoria wind her eyes. This is where, well, uh, Matsui, Matsui just pushes up. And this is where he was about to punch her in the face. Which he decides to stop right in front of her. This is where a freaking, like, a little bit of, like, air pushes her kind of, like, Hood back and this is where, well, she whined her eyes. She would have got clocked out by Matsui if Matsui didn't just, like, decide not to punch her. This is where, well, Matsui grins and says, Look here, Exorcist. I would have literally fight you. I would love to fight you. But I have things to do. And I have people to uh, mostly contact. But other than that, fuck off. This is where, well, Matsui kind of gets, well, mostly... Gets his punch back towards, well, mostly his fist back towards his left, or mostly his side. 
And of course, the weird, well, he then starts walking away. This is where, well, the orange haired girl doesn't like this and rushes at Masui with her own sword to try to stab at him. This is where, well, the sword was about to hit him. Well, it does hit him. It pierces through mostly his like chest because he allows it. And this is where he grins. This is where he grabs uh, uh, mostly the orange haired uh, girl kind of like mostly hand. It's none of Irina. This is where Irina right now just gets scared because what she looks up she doesn't look at like a terrifying look or right now just shock look but mostly a sinister evil grin here's to where Matsui says interesting so you're trying to kill me oh yes it seems that you're trying to kill me right now he uh, kind of gets his cursed creature around him right now pulls out the sword and this is where he was about to cut her down until the sword was caught this is where well Mostly, well not the sword, mostly the hand was cut before I actually decided to cut at Irina. Irina closed her eyes. This is where Zenobia widened her eyes, and this is where everyone widened their eyes. This is where, well, Irina never did get cut, but this is where, well, she kind of looked up, and this is where, well, Matsui's hand is being grabbed. Because Matsui kind of uses his left hand to kind of still grab onto Irina's hand to make sure she doesn't get out of his grasp, and his right hand was the one to get grabbed. This is where, when he turns around, he sees a pissed off East Day. This is where, well, Matsui right now wind his eyes. This is where Issei says, put your sword back away. This is where, well, Matsui hears the deep, murderous voice in, was it called? Mostly this dark, sinister, murderous voice in, well, Issei's tone. This is where, well, uh, was it called? Mostly Matsui nods, of course, pulling out the sword and pushing was Irina away. This is where he jumps, uh, well, far away from her. Of course, this is where, well, uh, behind, well, was it called? Well, Issei is, well, Rainer, and behind Rainer is, uh, was it called, um, Azia. Of course, Azia kind of starts healing, was it called, well, Matsui, and Matsui is confused with her. But this is where, well, he's right now kind of, like, uh, having his eyes kind of stuck onto Issei. Now, Issei didn't show, well, sometimes he's really calm chill and other things but seeing his murderous gaze now that was something shocking this is where well he only the only time he ever has a murderous gaze is when you accidentally hurt someone he kind of knows or someone that he loves this is where well this is where well sorry brother so of course this is where well Issei Chana kind of just looks at mostly the girl with orange hair and purple eyes and this is where, well, the orange hair, uh, purple eye girl kind of looks up to see a white haired man who looks to be way taller than her. And of course, uh, right now looking at her with kind of uh, black shades. This is where, well, most of you black circle shades. This is where, well, the person says, do you need help, Irina? This is where Irina says, yeah, I do. She right now grabs a hand. And of course, this is where she gets lifted up. And this is where, well, Irina says, Ow, damn, I was about to die. Thank you again, sir. This is where, well, she gets hugged, and this is where, well, old Rainer, well, Rainer gets kind of jealous, and this is where Rias also does get jealous a little bit. This is where, well, he says, he kind of smells her and says, well, you still smell like lavender, Irina Chen. This is where Irina's face is all red, and says, uh, I don't know you, why you hugging me? This is where, well, Issei kind of lifts up his glass and says, You seriously don't remember me? Aww, we were four years old when we met each other. This is where, well, <coughs> Irina says, uh, Issei? This is where, well, Issei grins at her and says, Yeah. Are, are you seriously telling me you don't remember me? This is where, well, Irina says, No, Issei, you're, you're much taller than me. How the fuck are you so much taller than me? She whines and gets angry. And this is where, well, she starts kind of punching at, well, Issei's kind of chest very lightly. But of course, this is where Issei's chuckling and giggling at her. But yeah, and her antics. This is where, well, she sighs and says, well, you really became much taller. And much more, she say, handsome also. This is where, well, Issei says, huh? Did he say something? This is where Irina's face becomes red because she thinks that Yisei basically hurt her. And hoping for the love of God that he didn't hurt her at all. And this is where, well, Yisei is just chuckling because he did hear what she said. This is where, well, both was a car, Rainer and Rias are kind of just getting jealous, but yeah. Now this is where, well, Yisei said, well, 
I'm happy to see you again. Sorry about my, well, right hand man here. This is where he kind of like puts his hand, well, mostly showing towards Masui. And this is where, well, uh, mostly I really say right hand man. Yes, Masui uh, Fujigoro. This is, uh, what's it called? He kind of points at Matsui. And this is where, well, he then points at Irina and says, This is Irina. Of course, I don't remember her last name, but yeah. This is where, well, Irina says, Oh, so he's like a friend of yours. You can say that. <laughs> this is where, well, Irina says, Cool. Um, he's also very scary. She kind of hides behind, well, Issei. This is where Issei says, Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you should know that he's very scary. He doesn't really like taking any attacks indicating either you're trying to kill him if he gets attacked in his chest he's thinking that you're trying to kill him and he will try to kill you that's why you're gonna say oh that's why he doesn't look like he wants to hold back anything yup he barely does hold back anything this is where well that's what he says say's the one who always loves to hold back against everyone this is where well he says huh i don't hold back i definitely kill people Hmm. He says, I should remember that phoenix bird. This is where, well, Masui says, yeah, 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 you are racist as from existence. This is where, well, Irina is confused, but that's where Zenobia is looking at, well, Issei. And she has a tint of blush because, well, anyone that kind of gets contact into Issei, he looks way better than almost anyone. Basically, he looks like a supermodel. But, of course, he's not a supermodel, but a fucking just god half the time. This is where, well... He said, puts back his glasses to his face and says, Well, I should be going. I am kind of meeting up with Morahama. This is where, well, that's who we kind of, uh, well, see that his chest is here and kind of thanks the, what's it called, priestess. Until, well, Zenobia says, You're Azia Gentle. You're the, this is where, well, Rainer appears right in front of her and says, What do you want with her? This is where, well, Rainer kind of glares at, well, we'll see Zenobia. Zenobia kind of says, Hmm. I see, so you're a fallen angel. This is where, well, Issei appears right in front of the car, uh, Rainer and was car, well, Azia, and says, Sorry, I don't know who you are, but I don't like you kind of disrespecting my girlfriend. This is where, well, Issei has right now a finger up towards his face, and of course, this is where this red energy ball appears. This is where, well, Issei right now has to murder with the intent to actually kill her, to dare to disrespect. Well, someone that he loves. This is where, well, uh, this is where uh, Rainer went her eyes and said, You say, no, it's not that bad. This is where, well, once we say, and not that you said you uh, won't hold back. That's something that won't even kill her. This is where he said quietly, and no one did hear him, but yeah, this is where everyone was freaking out. This is where, well, Rias knows how much destruction that would actually cause. So, of course, this is where she's actually, is not going to uh, right now rise her power because it might piss off easy. This is where, well, uh, Irina appears right in front of Zenobia and says, uh, No, 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 sorry about it was a car, Zenobia. She might be a little bit blunt. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I, I didn't know that you had a, well, girlfriend. This is where she kind of sits quietly and very kind of sad in a little bit. This is where, well, he says, huh? Oh, sorry, I forgot to mention about this. Yes, this is, well, Yuma, or also known as Rainer. Uh, well, my fallen angel kind of. Angel. This is where, well, Irina kind of nodded slowly, kind of sat in a little bit, and he said he didn't notice her satin expression. Now, of course, he does know that basically Irina likes him, of course, ever since our children, but this is where, well, he can kind of send back the same feelings because he basically does like, well, Irina also, because they've been childhood friends, but yeah. But of course, he doesn't know if he can actually love two girls at the, at the same time. This is where, well, he can tease them, but he doesn't know much. This is where, well, uh, Rainer says, stop this, Issei. Don't attack your f best friend, your childhood friend. This is where, well, he says that's fine. This is where he puts the red energy away, but yeah. This is where, well, um, Mosi, what's it called, Masui is leaving. He already opened the door and just start walking away. This is where, well, Ozia started kind of being, well, dragged along by, well, Rainer, also known as Yuma, but yeah, or Yuma Rainer, whatever. This is where, well, Issei says, well, I should be going then. This is where, well, Issei said, also, good luck with your Excalibur's kind of hunt. This is where, well, Irina says, wait, how did you, huh, you think I wouldn't know? 
But I still tell me everything. And you can never hide it away from me. And I also do know a lot of secrets that you're trying to hide. This is where, well, Irina's face becomes all red. And this is where, well, she was about to pass out, which managing, still not being managed to catch her, but yeah. This is where, well, she was all red. And kind of having a little bit of blood of her nose kind of fall and drip. This is where Issei just smirks and just walks away. This is where, well, Zenobia says, what is happening? This is where, well, Rias, she's right now feeling really fucking jealous. This is where, well, she can't believe that Issei knows another girl. And, of course, yes, that's, well, Issei and Reina are, are kind of dating. And, of course, she's jealous also with that. But, of course, this is where, well, she basically wants Issei towards herself, most of Rias. Wait, yeah, this is where, well... Issei is kind of walking along with, well, Rainer and even Ozia. But yeah. Now, of course, the word, well, Issei sees, uh, was it called Ozia like a little sister? But yeah. Now, of course, the word, well, they're walking. And of course, the word Issei says, well, I should be going with Motohama. I gotta go see him. This is where, well, Rainer and Ozia nod. And that's where Issei kind of disappears, teleports. This is where, well, we go into mostly uh, Motohama and, well, mostly. Most of we kind of talking to each other. This more well, Monohama says, hmm, Excaliburs. Interesting. And you met a crazy priestess and also um, another Excalibur user, but this Excalibur user wasn't with the crazy priest. Pretty much. What did he look like? An older, bigger version in Kiba. That doesn't help me at all. <laughs> this is where, well, Monohama says to Masui. This is where, well, what a, uh, this is where Masui says, well, that's the best description I can give you. This is where <sighs> Motohama just sighs and says, seriously, Masui, you got to get better at what's it called giving out descriptions. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm not good at descriptions. I'm only good at give me a paper and the bounty you need to freaking go get killed and I will kill him in an instant. This is where, well, <sighs> Motohama sighs and says, yeah, 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 yeah. This is where, well, Issei appears and says, so what are we talking about? This is where, well, Marahama explains towards, well, Issei, and what, uh, so we kind of, kind of related to him, but yeah. This is where, well, Issei says, I see. Hmm. I don't much, I don't really know much about the Excaliburs or any of the holy bumble, jubble, whatever bullshit, uh, book or whatever that is. This is where, well, uh, Matsui says, huh. I really thought you did. I thought you'd be like reading that shit and learning about the supernatural or something. The hell? Why the hell should I care about that? This is where, well, what's what he says? I guess you didn't really care that much. No shit. Now, what exactly are we going to do about the whole crazy priestess on the loose that I killed him? This is where, well, what I'm gonna say is I could go after him and kill him. This is where, well, Issei said, no, I'm allow, well, Matsui to do that. This is where, well, Motohama says, why not me? I can definitely track him down. Because, well, he might be a crazy fucking priestess who likes to just be swinging his blade around. And Matsui is a perfect person to literally break his blades and then punch the shit of him. And this time, uh, Matsui, make sure to actually kill him. Oh, shit, I would love to. Don't worry, I got this. Nothing work, mom. He say not in this world. Well, he then looks at Morahama in this world. Well, he says, Morahama, I want you to keep an eye on the, oh, well, it's a car exorcist. Why? I thought one of them were your friend. Well, the blue haired girl, and she's not really my friend. Mostly well, it's Irina's. And she seems to really try to kill Azia, which pisses me off. And does also piss me off the fact that she disrespect someone I love. This is where, well, both, uh, well, Matsui and Morahama. Morahama says, dude, I already know who the hell you love. She is not even a fucking, well, how should I say, secret. Mostly everyone in the school knows who you kind of love. And it's none other than the fallen angel. Even though the humans don't know she's a fallen angel, but shit. We already know. You don't need to keep a secret. This is where, well, he says, he says, I guess you do know. Blah, blah, blah. I don't really care. Is it work? Well, <sighs> but whatever. Dude, just make sure to, I don't know, keep yourself protected just in case you kind of get something from her. Is it work? Well, 
He says, I don't know what you're talking about. Can you explain in detail and what I will get from her? And how, in what way? This is where, well, what am I say? I'm not going to explain it to you. Don't act like a child right now. This is where, well, what am I say? This is where, well, he says, says huh. I probably won't get anything from her. She's probably ready to, uh, how should I say, last of all. This is where, well, what am I say? I don't care, man. You do whatever with her. Go get a room, you two. Fuck off and whatever. I'll go deal with the exorcist. This is where, well, Murahama decides to activate some armor on him and decides to walk away. This is where underneath his kind of clothes. This is where, well, once we say, God, I go look for the priestess right now. Oh, no, you don't. What about class? Fuck you. I'm not dealing with class. This is where, well, he say chuckles because he knows he's not going to deal with class neither. He doesn't care. But we go into mostly a time skip. Of mostly Issei kind of walking back home with, well, Rainier. Well, mostly Rainier is kind of going towards an apartment with Azia. And yeah, this is where Issei says, well, good luck with um, mostly a lot of things. And I'm sad you're not coming along with me back to my house. This is where Rainier kind of has a little tint of blush. But this is where she kind of just smirks a little bit and says, why? Were you trying to get me in your bed? And literally, this is where she starts to whisper into his ear. Plus 18 stuff, and this is where, well, Issei kind of grins and says, yes, I was. This is where Rainier blushes, because Issei can literally just care less. This is where, well, Issei puts mostly his hand around her waist and says, and pull her closer and says, yes, I was. Can I not do that to my lovely, beautiful fallen angel? This is where, well, Issei says, um, can you two stop? This is where her face is all red. This is where, well, Issei says, oh, sorry about that, Asia, uh, Chan. This is where Rainer kind of blushes and says, Yeah, sorry about that, Azia. This is where, well, <sighs> Azia says, Yeah, this is where, well, Issei kind of says, Well, I should be going then. See ya. This is where he teleports, but yeah. This is where, well, uh, Rainer kind of gets inside, and this is where, well, they get to mostly the apartment's room, and of course, kind of like, kind of go into apartments, but yeah. This is where, well, Rainer was about to get into her apartment until she heard a kind of, mostly a voice. That sounded like an older man. And this is where she turned around. This is where she said, Father, what are you doing here? This is where, well, the older man who has kind of blondish hair in the front and black hair mostly behind him. But yeah, this is where, well, mostly on top of his hair and has a beard and has kind of these purplish eyes similar towards Rainer. Kind of says, oh, I've just been watching you and your, how should I say, Husband kind of flirt with each other. Now, you see here, Rainer, I'm not trying to get grandkids too early on. Because I know you two are still children. So, make sure that you don't you don't actually bring grandchildren with, with you the next time I visit you, okay? Or the next time they appear out of nowhere. This is where, well, Rainer's face is red and say, shut up and go away. This is where, well, the person grins and says, well, should we go in then? This is where he kind of just flies out, well, mostly fly away, but yeah. He mostly disappears in the magic circle. That shows to be Fallen Angel, but yeah. This is where, well, she kind of sighs and says, bastard. This is where, well, she gets inside and sees Ozzy. Ozzy getting ready to kind of just eat, but yeah. This is where, well, Rainer just grins at her and says, oh, well, I see, you seem hungry. This is where, well, I says, yeah, I kind of didn't eat in, well, mostly the cafeteria. This is right, uh, mostly Rainer says, good, then I'll cook you some something. This is where, well, I say, thank you, Rainer Chan. We go into, well, Issei. Hmm. Issei gets back to his house, and this is where, well, Issei was about to, like, walk into his house until he remembers his family, well, not, what's it called, he remembers that his, like, dad and mom were going to go somewhere today. And mostly they wouldn't come back until night. But saw his door a little bit open. He walks in cautious. But a little bit annoyed. And whoever the fuck decides to break into his house. This is where, well, he's walking in until he hears, hmm, it's been a while, Gocho. This is where, well, he turns around. Well, mostly, he, uh, he kind of, this person says, it's been a while, Gojo Hatake Issei-san. This is where, well. Issei turns around just to see his kind of like living room with someone sitting on a couch. This is where this person kind of has a blackish kind of coat or mostly 
a blackish coat to be a different school uniform. And this is where he's wearing like this weird kind of like yellow kind of, uh, how should I say? This is where, well, he kind of wears like this Buddhist priest kind of outfit. Of course, it's like yellow and green kind of pattern. And of course, the word, well, the person has longish black hair. And of course, the where he has uh, kind of some black hair but bangs kind of covering one eye a little bit. But this is where he shows his like black onyx eyes. And of course, the word, well, he kind of grins, a little grinning smile towards Issei. And this is where Issei says, Ghetto Yoshin, what are you doing here? This is where, well, he then smirks even wider. He kind of just grins even wider. And this is where he says, it's been a while, don't you think? He says, San, what do you want, Yoshin? I swear, well, he frowns a little bit and says, no proper manners? Ah, you are just like always, ever since, well, middle school. This is where, well, he says, sits down right in front of him. Right now, not scared of him or anything. Right now, more annoyed. What do you exactly want? He kind of sits right in front of him. This is where Yoshin grins and says, oh, Come on, he say, Is this really the proper way to greet your best friend? <laughs> he say grins and says, <laughs> Best friend. Huh. I haven't heard that word in a while. After we lost context in high school. Huh. I guess you're right. Since you're going to Kuo Academy, he gets up. And this is where Issei also gets up. Just a little bit on guard. This is where, well, uh, Yoshin says, you know, it's been really a long time since we met each other like this. Mostly talking to each other instead of or trying to kill each other, isn't that right? Hmm. I wonder, are you still very angry since I called you gay that last time you were wearing that pink ass dress? It was a bootum. Shut the hell up, Issei. This is where, well, Issei chuckles and says, huh, it's been really a long time. And I kind of miss you kind of screaming at me. It's kind of funny. This is where, well, Yoshin says, I will scream at you more, you asshole. This is where, well, he says, whoa, whoa, don't be so mean to me, you weakling. This is where, well, Ghetto kind of, well, makes this, like, cursed spirit appear. This giant cursed spirit saying, I will eat you, you motherfucker. This is where, well, he say appears with this where cursed energy ball right in his finger and saying, don't make me blast you straight to hell. This is where, well, they kind of just dispel their curse energy and they start just giggling and chuckling at each other. <laughs> this is where, well, both Issei and, well, Yoshin kind of stop, kind of just, well, trying to attack each other. This is where they sit back down. And this is where, well, Issei says he wants something to drink. Nah, I'm fine. Issei pulls out like this green tea, uh, mostly just pulls out like a sweet tea kind of like container for mostly... Not container, mostly a bottle, and just start drinking it. This is where, well, Issei says, It's been such a long time, don't you think, Yoshin? Yoshin says, Of course, it's really been a while. I should mention that Yoshin, uh, what's it called? Yoshin's last name is Geto Uchiha, but yeah, he did say that. This is it where, well, Yoshin says, Huh, it's really been a while. So, tell me, Issei, have you gotten a girlfriend? Hmm, I guess you can say so. I'm so sad I didn't bring her back. This is where, well, Yoshin says, I'm glad you didn't bring her back. She will probably be disappointing in you in that. This is where, well, Issei kind of just flicks something at him. This is where Yoshin dodges to say, huh, what, are you so angry that I'm kind of right? No, I'm just kind of annoyed that you were trying to guess. Well, have you seen me in the fucking bathroom? You know that's creepy as hell, Yoshin. This is where Yoshin goes, you motherfucker, I would never look at you. I'm not gay. This is where, well, Issei chuckles and says, Huh, oh, you're, I might, well, I mean, yeah, you're not gay, but you do kind of look like a pedo. This is where, well, Issei dodges something. They almost hit him in the head. This is where Yoshin says, again, I'm not a pedo, you motherfucker. I'm the same age as you. This is where Issei chuckles and says, really, you are? Oh, I thought you looked like you were 35. This is where he almost gets hit by something, mostly like this kind of like curse uh, bounty ball that Issei did flip towards his head. And of course, the word, well, Issei just dodges and says, Huh, why are you so angry that I actually managed to get the age correct? This is where, well, Yoshin says, No. This is where, well, Issei ducks his head because it did bounce to the wall and almost hit him in the back of the head. This is where he ducks down. And this is where, well, <sighs> Yoshin caught it and says, Still, it's been such a while. I'm kind of glad that you made friends with someone that's very powerful who has zero curse energy. And zero magic. Hmm. 
I guess you can say that. This is where, well, uh, you shouldn't say still. How is that red dragon imbecile? He's quite perverted, if I remember last time. This is where Drake appears saying, Okay, you want know shut the hell up, you brat. You know how long I've been living. This is where, well, Geto says, Long enough to realize that I can't believe a heavenly dragon like you should be a pervert. This is where, well, Drake gets quite a tick mark. This is where the gauntlet is having the tick mark. And this is where it's glowing green and saying, I'm going to rip you apart. He said, kill him. He say, says, no, I'm not going to kill him. This is where, well, he said, caught the kind of curse ball that was right now bouncing around. He throws it back towards the Dakar Yoshin. Yoshin just caught it back. This is where, well, <sighs> Drake says, come on, you brat. Do something. He's disrespecting you. This is where he says, says no, he's just dis uh, disrespecting an old ass dragon that's right now in my what's called right hand. Which, yeah. This is where, well, Drake kind of gets a tick mark and says, Listen up, you motherfucking brats! I am the oldest here. This is where, well, Yoshin and even Issei says, Old ass dragon. This is where, well, Drake says, I'm going to kill the fucking both of you when I get out of this godly, you motherfuckers! This is where, well, Issei and Yoshin start chuckling and giggling. This is where, well, mostly bursting out of laughter. This is where, well, uh, Drake says, You want fuck both of you. I'm out of here. I'm going to sleep. This is where, well, Issei stops chuckling and laughing at other things. This is where, well, he then grabs a curse ball and throws it back towards Yoshin. Yoshin manages to catch it and throws it back. This is where, well, Yoshin says, Well, that's quite interesting. Issei caught it and then just throws it back. This is where, well, Issei says, Yep. <laughs> I didn't really think that you can really piss off the what's it called red dragon of pervertedness this is where well you shouldn't say I guess you're right it's quite funny to see him just kind of struggle and angry and just just disrespecting his pride it's pretty easy to actually disrespect, uh, disrespect him well yeah it's pretty easy this is where he caught the what's it called Ball and flex it back towards the car, Yoshin. This is where he says, So, what about yours? Uh, was it called Blue Dragon Emperor? This is where, well, Yoshin caught it and then flicked it back to Curse Ball. This is where he says, Oh, he's here. He's quite also, I um, might say, quite perverted also. Jesus Christ, are all dragons perverted? This is where, well, the Blue Dragon, like a Blue Dragon godly appears on his right hand and says, Shut the hell up, brat. This is where he said with an annoyment because he was chuckling inside, kind of laughing at Drake. But this is where, when, uh, what was it called? He says, say, so it's that perverted dragon there. This is where he says, shut the hell up, brat. This is where, well, Yoshin says, yep, he's still here. This is where the blue dragon's name is, what's it called? This is where, well, he kind of says, so what about the, well, your dragon name, Owl? How's he doing? This is where, well, well, he says, the perverted dragon. This is where Owl screams, you little brats. I can't believe you're so disrespect or, uh, disrespectful to your elders. This is where, well, Yoshin says, He's quite alright. He's been always begging me to literally go look up, well, how should you say, look up girl skirts. I'm not gonna be doing that. This is where, well, he say chuckles and says, Seriously, why the hell do we have such perverted dragons? This is where Aqua and also Troy say, Shut the fuck up, both of you damn brats. You don't know the beauty of seeing a beautiful girl's on her skirts and then just looking at them voluptuous. This is where, well, both Issei and mostly Yoshin kind of gets quite annoyed and literally just turn them off by kind of disconnecting them for a while. This is where, well, he says that God are such perverts. This is where Yoshin nods and says, Seriously, perverts, I, I can't believe how am I stuck with this dragon? He says, Seriously? I'm stuck with him also. He won't leave me alone. He's been begging me to literally just take my. Girl into her little, uh, literally pleasure her. This is where, well, Issei says, God, he's annoying. This is where Yoshin says, I can hear you. Well, I don't want you to have the girl part, but whatever. Issei says, yeah, you don't really have a girl part. You mostly, well, mostly a girlfriend. You mostly have a boyfriend then. This is where, well, Yoshin says, I'm gonna kill you, bastard. This is where Issei chuckles and says, huh, I'm just joking, bastard. This is where, well, Yoshin says, Still, it's quite annoying to deal with these barbaric dragons. I wonder how the white one is. Do you think the white one or even black one might be quite annoying as them? This is where, well, Yoshin says probably. Seriously, they're quite annoying. This is where, well, he flicks, uh, what's it called, the ball back towards Issei. And Issei just caught it and just flicks it back. But yeah, this is where, well, 
He was mostly a curse ball, but yeah. This is where, well, EC then grabs the ball, flicks it back, but yeah, this is where, well, just bouncing around for right now. And this is where, well, EC kind of gets serious. This is where, well, EC says, I'm, hmm, how should I say? I feel like you didn't just come here for, with a friendly chat, Yoshin. What are you here for, really? This is where, well, Yoshin gets serious and says, oh, I'm just here because I have some information I can tell you. But I have a little request in helping. What's that? Take out one of the fallen angels. Well, mostly a leader. Can you do it or what? This is where Issei grins and says, You have my attention. Which fallen angel am I taking out? Well, this guy is kind of a crazy battle maniac because the last time he attacked me and my group. You have friends? Issei said, Bluntly, this is where it will. Yoshi said, No shit, I have friends. Ah, oh, you're such an asshole sometimes. Issei said, Oh, sorry about that. I thought you were so lonely. I thought you couldn't make it without me. This is where Yoshin grabs upon, and throws it so fast at him. Then he says, still caught it and just flicks it up. And this is where it's just bouncing up and down. This is where, well, Yoshin says, you're quite annoying, you say. This is where you say, chuckles and says, well, tell me something that I don't know. <laughs> this is where, well, Yoshin says, shut the hell up, bastard. Whatever. Pretty much, yes, this fallen angel's name, Coco Bill. And he did attack my group last time. This is where he says, hey, wait, 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 why didn't you just take him out? You have the power, don't you? Yeah, but uh, he ran away like a little bitch. This is where, well, he says, hey, <laughs> damn, that sucks. And I wasn't there entirely. Then where the fuck were you at? Hmm. What do you, I guess you would like to know. Why? Is it because one of my friends in my group literally got attacked and you're worried about me? He says, hell no, I'm not worried about you. I'm just kind of surprised you weren't there with your group. I thought you were. Huh, well, I am mostly with my group, but still. I was doing something else. Dealing with someone else, but yeah. Okay. So, what do you want? Well, I have, what's it called? An annoyment, mostly. The annoyment is the fallen angel. He seems to really have a motive to cause war. He attacked my group, that's just because we were holding an angel, mostly helping her. And, um, I guess Coco Bill wanted to kill her just to start a war. Luckily, we managed to stop him, but yeah. He seems to really went after this uh, this angel. The information we got, it seems the angel is related to that of, well, Michael, or Probably close to Michael. You know, one of the fucking angelic angels or something like that. Oh, I see. So, I'm guessing that Coco Bill wants to start a war with the heaven. He's probably also wanting to start a war with hell. You know, the nine realms of hell, whatever. And I do know here in Kuo, right now, there's two demon heiresses. Sona Sifri and also Rias Grammary. And I'm guessing you sure already know about them. Since you already took out a pillar called the Phoenix Pillar. Ah, he had it coming. Arrogant little fucking shit. That's where Yoshin chuckles and says, well, yeah. But still, I should just be telling you this because you don't know if a war might happen. Hmm, are you going to stay here in Kuo? Maybe. Maybe I'll stay here for a little bit. I want to kind of kick the fucking brakes off that damn fallen angel. This is where, well, he says chuckles and says, well, where are you going to be staying? Hell, I'm not going to be telling you. He says, said, oh, come on, you already know where I live. Yeah, but I'm not going to attack you. You have your parents here. What happened to your parents? Oh, they're back home. I just said I was going to go to Kuwa for a little bit. This is where he says chuckles and says, wow, very slick. <laughs> this is where, oh, yeah, she says, shut the fuck up. Oh, whatever. Besides, at least my parents knows about the supernatural. Yours still doesn't. Hmm, it, does, it doesn't really matter if they need to know or not. All they gotta know is, basically, their son is broken as fuck and they will literally be protected. This is where, well, Yoshin says, I don't know if that's too, if that's so arrogant or just too pity. I think it's just both. This is where he says, kind of just grin, it kind of just like gets angry at him. This is where he grabs a curse ball and it's pretty big. It's no longer a small curse ball. It's the size of like a, uh, what's it called? One of those big, like, bouncy balls. 
This is where he tosses it. I was in Kaiyoshi in the back of the head. And this is where he tosses it faster than normal. This is where it bounces off the wall and smashes him in the head. This is where Goshen gets annoyed and says, You mother! This is where, well, Issa chuckles and says, What? I didn't do anything. He's drinking his tea. This is where, well, Yoshin says, Fuck you, bastard. Hmm. Well, I have maybe some information that you should know. Hmm? What is that? I think I know what Coco Bill also wants. He's stolen some of the Excaliburs. Excaliburs? I see. I remember hearing about that. One of my, well, information sources managed to get, well, about those Excaliburs. Something about the church having six of them. And another one being with someone else. Yep, pretty much. It seems that, well, one of my, I should say, right-hand man, mostly Fujigoro Matsui, Manage or he doesn't say mostly his name, mostly right hand man, managed to kind of encounter a freak with one of the Excaliburs and another person who looks like an older version of someone else, uh, basically one of the demon heiresses kind of servants, but it kind of looked like an older version or I don't know who the fuck that guy was, who pretty much had a very kind of like hero over kind of like power energy, what mostly my right hand man said this is where well <sighs> this is where well uh yoshin says that could be a problem if they have the x calibers they have four pieces or whatever <laughs> what about the other two two exorcists right now has them one you can probably already know because you kind of met her before and the other one you probably don't know but those two exorcists are right now being spied on by my, well, left-hand man. I see. So when are you going to get like a right-leg man and a right left-leg man? This is where you say, say, shut the hell up. This is where, well, you shouldn't chuckle and say, hey, I'm just saying. But still, I see. If they're being right now, if they have the Excalibur bears, and, well, Coco Bill has four of them right now being used by a crazy fucking priestess, I can guess that he probably wants the other two. He only brought those two other Excaliburs to start a war, I guess, with the church. Meaning that heaven would, would literally come down to fight Coco Bill and even hell. Meaning that a crossover might happen. This is where, well, he says, says, yeah, that's what I got to it. I didn't know who was not behind this, but now that you say a fallen angel, this could be a problem. <sighs> well... I'll be, I guess I'll be meeting your group later on, am I not? Yeah, and I guess I'll be meeting your group also. <laughs> this is where, well, Yoshin smiles and says, well, I should be leaving then. Darkness swallow him. This is where, well, not darkness swallow him. Mostly he says something about Kamui. This is where he disappears. This is where in the vortex. This is where, well, he says chuckles and says, what a showy bastard you are. Huh. This is where he kind of grins and then walks away. This is where he kind of like locks the door and kind of goes upstairs and realizes that his, uh, what's it called, bed? Well, his bed sheets were literally just kind of um, put somewhere else. This is where he says, you mother. This is where, well, Yoshin, he screams. This is where we go into Yoshin kind of sneezing. And this is where he meets up with his group and says, so we're going to have a bad one in the near future. He's going to explain to all of them. This is where all of them nodded. This is where, well, Yoshin also says, you're also going to have to meet a group, well, mostly a friend of mine. A good friend, or mostly a jerk at the same time. But, at the same time, just don't try to fight them, okay? This is where all of them not. This is where, well, Yoshin kind of goes to his kind of quarter room and kind of just literally goes to sleep, but yeah. Of course, this is where, well, before going to sleep, he feels like a vortex up here next to him. And this is where he says, Issei, how the fuck did you? Issei literally takes the bed sheets, even the blanket and the pillows away from what, what's it called, Yoshin's bed. And this is where Yoshin says, you mother. <laughs> Issei said, I don't give a fuck. <laughs> Motherfucker took my bed sheets. Literally, I don't know where the fuck they're at. This is where, well, Issei kind of just didn't care. He managed to use the six axe to find where the fuck Yoshin was at. But he doesn't care. <laughs> This is where, well, Yoshin says, fuck. Damn, I need fucking extra bed sheets. Son of a... <laughs> this is where, well, he wasn't expecting Easy to literally just appear next to him, just take his shit. This is where, well, he realized that probably Easy kind of noticed his bed kind of being gone. <laughs> this is where, well, almost he had bed sheets and other stuff. It was just a small little troll, but yeah. This is where, well, 
Issei kind of goes to sleep, but yeah, he didn't care. <laughs> but we go into mostly the next day. This where, well, the Excalibur kind of, well, the mostly Exorcist were kind of still struggling because, well, Irina did waste some money to her buying this, like, sleep priestess and blood, well, mostly this, like, picture and yeah. And they're needing help and money and other stuff. And of course, they're not getting money or anything. And of course, they were, well, uh, what's it called? Motohama appears next to them and says, Yo, you want food? This is where, well, they kind of say, Oh, uh, what was your name again? This is where Irina said, This is where I don't know, yeah, says, Isn't it? What's it called? Motohama? This is where Motohama says, Yep. So, it seems that you two are starving. Uh, no, we're here helping for the church. I already know the church is abandoned, so don't play with me. This is where they sign and say, yeah, we need food. This is where, well, Motohama decides to help them out. And this is where, well, literally going to a kind of restaurant, and they're eating a lot. This is where Motohama just drinks some, what's it called, well, coffee, because he does ask for coffee, but yeah. And this is where, well, uh, both uh, Zenobia and Irina are right now kind of praying to God and other things. And this is where, well, they're kind of giving a blessing to us. Well, and Motohama. Motohama says, it's not, it's not really necessary, you two. I don't really believe in that, but whatever. This is where, well, they kind of narrow their eyes and say, you don't believe in God? Mmm, kind of not. I can't really test it out in science. I'm not much of a believer. Hmm. But then again, I could be believing in the fact that demons, exorcists, angels, falling angels don't exist. This is where the Northern Horizon says, so you do know the supernatural. Kind of, but I don't have really much any supernatural ability other than being extremely smart. <laughs> Unless that's count as a supernatural thing, which I doubt that's actually count as a supernatural. I'm just really smart. This is where, well, they kind of shake their head. And of course, Irina says, still. You should be blessed by God. This is where, well, the tab was a lot of money, but this is where, well, Motohama does pay it off with this kind of, like, uh, credit card that was black, like, having an obsidian. It was called an obsidian, what's it called? What's it called? Obsidian credit card. And this is where the person went in their eyes and says, holy shit, you're rich. This is where, well, uh, when they kind of, like, slide the card, this is where, well, they get paid off. But yeah, this is where, well, Motohama puts it back into his wallet. And this is where, well... Uh, both, well, Zenobia and, well, Irina went the ice and how rich he is. This is where, well, uh, what's it called? What the homo says? What are you two looking at? Well, you expect me to be kind of poor? Hell no. I'm rich as hell. This is where, well, he says very smirkly, but yeah. This is where they say, you know, being kind of grateful is one of the seven deadly sins, right? You know, you should be giving some money away then. So he says, oh, uh, not you say, mostly Motohama says, you're right. He then pulls out some money from his, like, pocket and says, here. Here you go, poor, poor person. This is where he, like, gives it to Zenobia. Zenobia kind of glares at him a little bit, but this is where she's like, fine, I'll take it. This is where, well, Motohama's just chuckling. This is where Ayuna sees, what's it called, both of them kind of glaring. Well, mostly Zenobia glaring at him, and Motohama's just chuckling a little bit, but yeah. This is where, well... <sighs> Irina right now thinks about what's it called, mostly Motohama being similar to Issei, but yeah. But of course, Motohama's a little bit shorter than Issei. He is kind of, well, tall, but he's only 5'8". It's where, well, Motohama, he's saying, well, do I should probably be getting home? Or do you want me to help you out with the Excalibur finding? This is where they say, how do you, don't be playing dumb with me. I know a little bit about the supernatural. And I did get a text a while ago and found out a lot of things about uh, a lot of information. <laughs> you can say I'm a hacker. I can easily find shit that I don't really want to find, but I find it on accident. This is where they say, uh, so you, do you know who stole them? Well, I don't know who exactly stole them, even though he got a text from Issei. And, well, must we to kind of meet up together because, well, he needs to talk to Matsui and Motohama about the problem <laughs> and about a quite good information source and he could be trusted in other things but yeah Murahama and Masui do not know about Yoshin's existence no one does know it about his existence and the same for Issei's side mostly uh, Yoshin doesn't really tell anyone about Issei but yeah and so what well, they know to well mostly they know about each other but of course they keep them each other safe secretly but yeah of course it worked well we go into mostly well 
you see just telling the weight. Yeah, this is where, well, what a homo kind of says, I know a little bit about the Excaliburs and other things, and I can help you. Maybe I can find you in location and other things. This is where, well, they nod it and say, yeah, we would like that. This is where he then pulls out his watch and a hologram of the pair, but yeah. A hologram, like keyboard holograms, and this is where it will. He then starts working on it, and this is where he says, hmm. Let me look through a bunch of cameras. This is where he's looking through it. Of course, he lifted down his, like, what's it called, shade sound, just to look around because he cannot see much faster with his eyes, but yeah. This is where he's, like, typing really fast, and this is where it will. He thinks and says, interesting. It seems I don't have a clue. I might be able to help you guys. This is where, well, they get happy and excited. And this is where, well, what I'm going to say is, huh, I'm just going to tell you one thing. I'm not much of a fighter, but I can help you. Hmm. I, can I see your holy weapons for a second? This is where they kind of narrow their eyes. Well, mostly Irina does, but this is where Zenobia kind of gives him. Of course, knowing that, well, he probably won't be able to pick it up. It's all about how he easily picks it up, and that's where he looks at it, studies it, and that's where, well, Gun puts it down, gives it back to Zenobi. Zenobi, one of her eyes, just realized that, yeah, he can definitely pick it up, even though he doesn't look physically strong. This is where he then types into his, like, what's it called? Mostly a uh, hologram computer thing. And of course, this is where, well, he says, hmm, I can probably upgrade it if you want to. This is where Zenobi says, why would you? It's already strong enough. Because I'm, you might need more power, mostly more firepower to fight against whoever stole the Excaliburs. This is where, well, Zenobi says, I guess so. This is where, well, she kind of blushes a little bit towards what they call multi, well, uh, Yosh, uh, well, not Yosh, multi, uh, Morahama. What am I saying? Well, other than that, I could help you find the Excalibur location, but it might cost you. This is where, well, they say, you want money? This is where, well, I mean, I say, but didn't you just pay us? This is where, well, what well, how much just chuckles and says, <laughs> what do you expect? I, well, not, nah, I don't really need the money. I'm thinking of something else. Hmm. This is where Zenobia presses her kind of chest next to him. This is where, well, what how much blush and says, what are you doing? This is where, well, Zenobia says, I thought you wanted your payment in like this. Mostly any young boy likes this. This is where, well, what how much? Kind of has a perfect grin. This is where he does shake his head and say, No, no, no. Um, I'm fine. I'm just thinking of something. Maybe you can give me a favor. Hmm. But yeah, that's all I want. So yeah, this is where, well, Murahama puts his arm away from mostly her bosom. But yeah, this is where, well, he has a little tint of blush. But this is where, well, he doesn't really try to show it. But yeah. This is where, well, I really didn't notice that much or near the Zenobi. But yeah, this is where, well, uh, was it called what Hamid coughs in his, was it called a hand and says, well, I should be going. I'll text you to about it. This is where they say, but we didn't give you a phone number. Aha, that's where you're wrong. This is where he pulls out his phone and literally shows him the two contacts and say, how did you, huh? Hacker really never reveals anything, does he? This is where they say, uh, I guess so. This is where, well, what Hamid says, well, I should be going then. Huh, see ya. This is where, well, Morahama walks away, but yeah. This is where, well, Zenobi and Irina says, that guy was strange, but in a good way, I guess so. This is where, well, Morahama gets back to his house and decides to start designing on the Excalibur. Well, we'll see the new Excalibur improvements for the one that Zenobi has. This is where I can't really shake the freaking dot off his head. He's not a pervert, of course, but she was really kind of adorable in his mind. He kind of liked the green highlight in her hair, mostly blue hair. This is where he's shaking his head. It's like, no, what am I thinking about? No, no, no. I'm, uh, I'm not a fighter. No, I'm not a fighter like what's it called, Matsui. Uh, and neither I'm not that great at fighting. But I'm not much of a genius, like higher level than what's it called, Issei. I'm a genius, but not a fighter. Should I kind of change it? No, no, I shouldn't. He kind of just whispers himself, but yeah. But of course, we go into Ise, getting towards mostly a rooftop, and this is where he's looking around with his eyes, trying to see where the fuck would a, what's it called, mostly Fallen Angel might be. This is where, well, he thinks that the Fallen, uh, mostly the Fallen kind of Bannon Church, but he thinks mostly the ex uh, mostly Exorcist would be there, so it wouldn't be there. This is where he's right now using Six Eyes to try to find the information, but yeah, we go into Matsui. 
But Tui is right now find, trying to find the damn priestess so he can easily kill this motherfucker. That's the right room. He's right now trying to track his prey down so he can kill him, but yeah. But of course, we go into mostly the devil's kind of thinking and what to do. Mostly, Kiba gets angry and wanting to go find the damn Excalibur to destroy them. So, of course, he's running off to do that, but yeah. Of course, Norarius doesn't know what to do, but of course, does ask, well, where's it caught? Rainer and what Issei is doing. Rainer doesn't actually know much in what he's doing or neither does the others, but yeah. It's where he sighs because she can see that, well, Rainer is kind of clueless in the whole thing. She's just really, she's not that smart to try to figure out Issei. Issei is just above and leagues above at her, but yeah. But other than that, I'm going to kind of end it off here for, well, part four of this what if, but yeah. That's part four way. Um, so yeah, part four of this what if. So other than that, bye. See ya. And uh, yeah, good night. Bye. So bye.